G'day. My name is Peter. In case you couldn't tell from that first word, I am Australian. Um, I do live in London these days. I've been there for 10 years now, but I'm um, very still quite proudly Australian with my unique Australian accent. Um, in London, I run my own web maintenance consultancy, L3 Linux, a small team right now, but hopefully growing rapidly. That's our logo up top there. Um, breaking down the barriers to the use of digital Linux. First of all, where are we now? And I actually used the exact same slide today last year. Because things actually haven't changed that much when it comes to digital Linux and how we're using it. Right now, I think we, as the digital Linux practitioners, are failing the consumers, the users, the data. Um, the reason I say that, we're not changing the world. We're not changing businesses. People are making a lot more money based on the insights, the information, and the recommendations we give them. There are some impressive exe um, exceptions. Some companies are doing amazing things, but right now, they are the minority. So what I want to explore today is what's stopping us, what's preventing us from helping companies make more money. Why isn't digital analytics at the heart of every online business these days? Identify the barriers, and hopefully, throughout some ideas which can be used to overcome and break down those barriers to drive things forward in the future. Um, where this talk all came from was a, um, one day, a few months ago, I um, talked to two prospects, two potential clients in the same day. I want to tell you a story about how um, that day went, how my discussions, my meetings with these two clients went. The first company is, um, is a women's fashion retailer, low cost, based in the UK, um, mid sort of size, not too small, not ASOS sized. Um, at that point in time, they're looking to grow quite rapidly. Um, they invest a lot of money in some advertising. They're on buses, tubes, outdoor, print, everywhere around the UK. And they had a new head of e-commerce come on board and say, all right, it's analytics. I'm an e-commerce person. Analytics is the court we do. Let's get this right. And brought me another chat. At that point, they're using classic Google Linux, key priority, upgrade to universal Linux. Duh. Also, get the new enhanced e-commerce in place because that's vital for the, um, the future as well. They had one in-house analyst, which is actually better than most companies, and she was there for a few years, and they was described as an expert. I think she was a really nice person, self-taught. I think she would recognise herself she had a lot to learn still. So they saw her as an expert. I wouldn't call her an expert. Uh, cool, I can do, um, help you out with everything. Help you set the analytics properly, enhance e-commerce properly, use Google Tag Manager, everything else. But no, no problem, it's okay. That's sorted. We told our developers to implement enhanced e-commerce. They can just do it for us. It won't be too hard to do. Um, we want your help, though, to get some, like, some core basic elements of Google Analytics properly. We need to um, get our keywords back for organic search. We're getting this whole not provided thing. Can you sort that out for us? And can you um, just show us how to use enhanced e-commerce properly and attribution properly, the core basics of analytics? OK, got some issues around the term basic and advanced concepts. And yet, you're pretty expensive. So can you just give us like one hour's training? So we're then experts. Because one hour's all it should take, really, to become an expert at Google Linux. Things sort of went downhill from that point there. The expectations way too high. Reality is a lot different. They actually didn't end up becoming a client. And checking yesterday, the developers put the Universal Linux code on the um, website, and they got that wrong, let alone anything else. Enhanced e-commerce isn't there yet. The other company was um, a publisher, big publisher, FTSE 200, I think, 150 odd websites, big, big brand. And um, I was asked to come in by the head of product. Also meant they're the head of insights, which is good. The odd insights department. Not Digital analytics, but insights. So it's a good sort of step forward there. And they tell me, Peter, we've got some problems. We, we know that. We're currently using um, web trends. We're paying for web trends. Also got GA on most sites. Got a lot of different business units in the business here, different websites, anything else there. They're sort of using different degrees, the analytics tools. Most of them using GA, don't use web, use web trends. They don't really trust the data. And at this point, we're about five minutes into the um, conversation. I went, actually, can you stop there for a second? 
can I actually try and finish the story for you? I want to try and predict what your issues are in the company right now, what barriers you're facing. So, I get, go ahead. Okay, so you're paying for web trends. When it first came out, it was implemented to a decent standard. Hasn't been looked at since the past two, three years. That's right. Um, no one in the business actually knows how to use web trends, so they try and avoid it. They threw GA on the website because it's free, it's easy to use. Cool. But they put the basic page tag only, no customizations. Yeah, that's right. And um, they looked to get number of page views, number of unique visitors. That's about it. That's all they really know how to do. Yeah. Um, every week, probably, email goes out from the Insights team or anyone else there, about 30 Excel reports on it. Everyone religiously gets this um, big email and presses the delete button without looking at a single thing. Yeah, that's about right as well. Um, there's no comps in the data. No one knows what's going on. Um, it's all a big mess, basically. It needs to be sorted out because everyone's really enthusiastic. They want, to, um, they want to use analytics. It's a good thing. Yeah, that's great. And at the very top, no one really wants to invest in it. There's actually no money, no budget. Yeah, that's pretty much right as well. How do you know all this? And I went, well, actually, I'm seeing the same problems, the same barriers, week in, week out, with a lot of different companies, small and big. It's the same problems again and again and again. And I was thinking about going, wait a second, if I'm seeing the same problems again and again, why can't we just find similar solutions and fix that? These barriers, once they've been background analyzed, we should be able to break them down. So I mean, the barriers talking about there, common things, poor setup analytics tools, being tracked incorrectly, or just the basic paycheck only, no customization, nothing smart about it. A big lack of experience. So many massive companies, pure play companies, with zero to one web analyst in-house is a common story. They'll employ 20 HR people, 50 accounts payable, but zero web analysts actually trying to understand how that business works, which is madness. Um, minimal to no investment. It's free GA, why pay for a tool? Yeah, we get a million sessions a week. Yes, our business depends on analytics, but why pay for a tool to understand that? Um, poor perception. It's so easy. I had a training company say to me, Peter, how would it take to train up someone from who's experienced a bit with Linux, they're not brand new, but done it a little bit with it, to going intermediate level, not advanced, intermediate level. What do you want? Six hours? Eight hours training? Are you serious? Eight weeks, ten weeks full time to get them started. The perception actually is quite easy. As I said, it's not that important. What's the big deal? It produces reports, produces data. What's the value in that? People aren't seeing the value in analytics. Lack of us and the potential. So we can get page views, we can look where people are coming from, big deal, what else? I use Simmer's example quite commonly then. You can capture the weather when they came to the website. It might not be useful for you, but wake up, there's so much you can get in this. The limitation is your creativity, not the tools themselves. No integration, business processes, it's left for the last minute, it's just it's an afterthought. It's not important to so many companies. It's given lip service, people talk about it, they don't believe in it. And finally, the big one there, no ownership. It's described as important. It might hit some bullet point somewhere. Low priority, no investment, no ownership. And these, these seven barriers here, I mean, put your hand up. Do these look familiar to you? Are you recognising these barriers? Are you seeing it in pretty much every company you work with? They're pretty common. So cool. Let's move on then. How can we break down these barriers? I've got a set of recommended actions, things I'm doing, or things I'm trying to do, more importantly, with my clients. Before that, this mention, the digital analytics maturity model, created by Stefan Hamill, Cardinal Path now, there's other variations, it's a great place to start. Identify where you are, where your company is, on these sort of six axes. Look to see, are you ranking at ones, twos, threes, whatever. Also look to see if you're unbalanced, that's the biggest problem. I'm okay for everyone being a two. It's better everyone being a two rather than being one at some points, four at others. Because I mean, if you've got a really powerful tool, no one knows how to use it, you've got a problem. If you've got really high expectations, no investment, you can't achieve the expectations, you've got a problem. If you've got a great tool, great people, everything else, but no ownership as the last priority, 
again, you've got some serious problems there. This is a great tool to identify these problems, to highlight them in a way which management can understand, because it's really simple. But into the actions. First of all, everything I do, focus on the basics first. Get the basics right. And I think there's been three key barriers to um, be able to use an analytics tool. Forget the processes and everything else, just that first part. Does the analytics tool itself have any value in it? First thing, know what you need to know. Understand, define in advance your business questions. What information do you need to answer your business questions, to take actions, to drive your business performance forward? Forget the tool, plan things out first. Define your questions first. From that, you've said, here's the information I need. Make sure that information is recorded within the Analytics tool. I don't care which tool. Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, Web Trends even, Core Metrics, Hit Counter. Is that information being recorded in the tool? Invest the resources in-house, hire a consultant, whatever it takes. Get that information in there. Because what you've said you need to know to improve business performance. And finally, be able to access the information. There's no point having that powerful tool there with all this incredibly useful information in it if you can't get your hands on it. Make sure people can access this information. It's training, it's reporting, it's going to get their hands on the information as they need it, take actions on it. To take the actions to improve business performance. So one, get the basics right. Next point, tap into the agile movement. This high degree of continuous, and for that, what I'm trying to say here is um, continuous enhancement of the tracking. I've had before, I worked with a client one time, went to the first part, defined the questions, wrote up what I think was a pretty good implementation plan, set of instructions, developers, here's the work you need to do. It was a pretty good way to do it. I went, cool, that's about 10, 12 days work. Okay, guys, go ahead and do it. You said Alex important. And that plan sat there on the shelf, gathering dust the next couple of years, until I gave up trying to connect them. It wasn't used at all. And if instead, if actually gone for continuous enhancement of um, tracking, if um, in every sprint, holding a sprint every two weeks, they'd done one action, one day of work. Two weeks in, got a little further forward. Six weeks in, the core three things would have been in place. By the end of like, half a year, it actually would have been all implemented. Not with one big chunk of work, which is too hard to do, too much time out of the um, doubles time. Doing it step by step by step, the work would have been done. And in the meantime, you could have actually taken actions based on that most important piece of information, second most important piece of information, and so on. So avoid this whole big barrier of implementation, continuous enhancement. And it's like um, lead analytics. Who haven't heard of this book at all? Look it up, buy the book, it's very much worth reading, a great read. And one thing about there is the, um, the one metric that matters. It's not quite by the links, different approach, but um, they're saying pick one metric in business at any one time. Focus all your energy on that one metric. Move the needle, improve the performance of that one metric. And when you're done, next metric, next metric, and so on. Rather than do everything at one time, pick one at a time, work on that. Same thing here. Rather than trying to implement everything in one go, pick one area, focus on that, improve it, then move to the next one. So can, um, here's an answer tracking, overcome some barriers. Next, training throughout the organisation. This means people get the information, their hands on the data. They can change the perception of the analytics, you can show them what's possible with it. Start with the basics. I mean, the Google Analytics videos on the basic problems around real life experiences. Okay, if you haven't seen those, look them up, they're really funny. It's a good way of showing people how bad their websites currently are. And the point of analytics is they're trying to highlight these issues. Tell them the basics. Hits, how it is track success, don't use the word hits. Unique visitors equals users is actually unique visitors. Um, unique browsers, it is not people. It's an inflated number. I understand that concept. Campaign tracking is really, really easy. Attribution is really, really fucking hard, if possible at all. And we'll argue that one at the bar later on. Um, you can track anything at all. The weather's something you can track. Anything is possible. Teach people what analytics means. What the value is in it. What can be done with it. Change the perception and show them how to get their hands on the information. We can change the way they work. 
So training's a critical part. People have to understand and know how to use analytics. But going with that, I'm a big fan of, like someone mentioned it yesterday, the whole different proof of concept, a pilot project. Start small. Um, I was in um, E-Metric Chicago last year, chaining a round table there, and one girl sort of said, um, eight business units, trying to help them all out, getting nowhere at all. Forget that then. Pick one of them. Dedicate all your time to one business unit only, or even one tenth business unit. Focus on them. Start small. I was my clients, I start small, choose one website out of 150. Because the thing is, when you first start out, there's one thing you're sure to do. That's make mistakes. Unfortunately, it happens. Keep the mistakes small initially. Start small, small mistakes, or big mistakes, but less of an impact. It's not going to break things. So start small, make the mistakes, learn from it, develop your own best practice, and then roll it out. If you go too big at the start, people will lose that confidence. They won't trust the data. They won't want to use it. You've tried to do too much at once. Always start small, break down the barriers. And from that, leading into the idea of um, internal champions, case studies. Because um, as I was told last night, us analysts are a bit shy people. We sort of stay in our, um, our chamber in a corner. We don't go around, around yelling at everyone how good we are and how we have changed the world, changed the business. We don't sell ourselves very well. So if we're not going to sell ourselves, someone else has to. So we don't prove a concept. You've changed the life of one team in the business. Because suddenly, these are the analytics. And it's making a difference. And they're making great money. So rather than you selling yourself, they'll sell it for you. And when they're um, Jeff on a holiday somewhere, they're like, well, how can you afford this holiday? I go, I've got a big bonus. Because I use analytics. And that guy there, that analyst, they're brilliant. They do amazing things. Because I found like when you're trying to um, educate people to analytics, start using, getting them using it, you force them, like, here, here's training, here's a tool, here's processes, templates, everything, that's great. They do nothing with it. You can't force people to use analytics, it doesn't work. Um, you can't push them into it. So instead, switch it around, get the internal champions, prove the concept, show the baby the analytics of, the, what you're trying to, of what you're trying to tell people what to do, then you get to the point where they're begging for your help to make them more money. And they've been told it works by their friends, their colleagues. It's not you selling it, until champions are selling it for you and they're asking for your help. And when they're asking for your help, then you've got an opening to make a difference. You've knocked down yet one more barrier. Ownership's a big, big thing. And Alex must be given big enough priorities. Again and again, I've gone through cases where um, they talk about analytics. So it was such a process. Reading here, it's one of the phases there. Common situation. It's a low priority. Um, new website feature, uh, new campaign going live. And I go, Peter, six to weeks time, we'll launch a new website feature. We want analytics. Great. I'm breaking through. Discuss them. What are your questions? What do you need to know? Let's define the tracking for that. Send it across them. That's great. Right now, it's number two on our list. It'll get done next week for sure. Okay, cool, fair enough. You have to build the actual feature first. Next week, how's it going? Yeah, no, it's going well. Um, well, this other thing came up though. It's, it's now number three on the list, but it's happening next week. Well, it's back to number two, but it's still happening. It's, it's going to happen definitely. And you get to the launch, and it was always number two, number three, number four. It never actually happened. The tracking wasn't set up. And things go live without tracking on them yet again. And the business board directors ask the, the product owner, the marketing manager, how's it going? How's that new launch? What's the Alex telling us? Yeah, it's great. I've done a great job. It's just, it's killing it. No Alex, yet again and again and again. It wasn't prioritised high enough. So how do we change that? Ownership's the key. If someone really, really senior up top gets fired, this is my dream. I want to see one day someone fired for unless I'm included in the tracking, in the, um, the new launch. Possibly not fired, but at least they missed their bonus. They get hit in the back pocket for not making analysts a big enough priority. That'd be my revenge against so many people over the years. But at that point, when that's happening, analytics finally becomes prioritised. Shit actually gets done. It gets done before launch, it's in there from the very start, it is important. Ownership is a critical part to get the, the right prioritisation and the right resources to actually happen. Without it, you're always going to be lost. Um, 
processes, templates. The older you get, the more you understand the red tape actually does matter. It does make a difference. Um, you need to actually, if you're doing well, you've got the proof of concept, you've made the mistakes, Lewis works, you template it. You make it replica um, replicatable, if that's the right word, pronounced correctly. Um, so you can reproduce the work again and again and again. It can be done, done faster, more reliable, and standardised. Processes and templates make a big difference. And um, a good example there, Tim Wilson, the US, um, when we mystified, has this concept, and it's worth reading their presentation, of um, people come to you and they ask for data. If they want you to put your own sort of time on board um, to create a report for them, do some analysis, you can ask them, I want two things written down, this is a nice template to use, and this is the process. First of all, tell me, what's your hypothesis? What do you expect to see in this report or this analysis? Tell me that first. You should have an idea about that. Second, most importantly, what action will you take based on this data? If you can tell me an action you'll take, how my work will actually influence the business and will actually impact the business performance, I'm happy to do it. Anytime, because it's, it's got meaning to it. If it's in the report, you go, hey, that was great. Thanks for that five days of work. Interesting. Throw it away. I'm not interested. Tell me up front what you do with my work, and I'll do it for you. This isn't easy, this is hard to do, like to tell the senior people, tell me stuff before I should do the work for you. This is what we should be aiming for. Tell me the hypothesis, tell me the actions I'm going to influence. Why are we talking about reporting though? Isn't reporting the whole anti thing? And so people actually don't have to use analytics. I mean, I am a geek, I like using the tools there. Um, Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, possibly even Web Trends if I have to. I don't want anyone else in the business to actually have to use the tools. They can if they want to, they shouldn't be forced to. So reporting is giving the information that they need at their fingertips without using the tools. That's the important part about it. More about it? The reports are all automated. They take seconds, minutes to run. Not days, they're automated to take a few minutes to run only. And they're not data pukes. They're basic information only. The key metrics, not an overload. These people, they're not analysts. They don't want to see a lot of data. They want to see the key information only, information at their fingertips. What sort of reports? I'm trying to find sort of structure, things I want to include with almost any client. Some things here, and I'll give you some examples of them, but first of all, a daily email. Email sent out, seven in the morning, on their phone first thing, showing five numbers. Their KPIs. How did they perform the previous day? How did they compare to the um, same day last week? Good day, cool, it's fine. Go to work, don't worry about it. Could it trigger an action? And this thing, with all this reporting, my reports aren't designed to trigger business actions. I admit that, they're reports, they don't trigger actions. They trigger further investigations, which can then trigger actions. This will highlight potential issues. So tell email, is there a problem? No, fine, don't have to worry. Ooh, things went bad yesterday, let's find out why and we'll fix it. A live dashboard. Yes, it's real time in some degrees. Most important though, it's on the big screen, uh, in front of everyone, visible to everyone. They're seeing analytics every day. They're seeing numbers, they're seeing um, metrics. Start some thinking. Um, and it's out there in the open, it's not hidden away anywhere. Um, part of it for me, my live dashboard, which you may see later on this golden punch card thing when I win that over Simo. Um, live dashboard, one side of it, yeah, real time. What's happening right here, right now? Other half though, what's happening today to date? Because I don't care about right now so much. How are we tracking today? Are we ahead or behind the curve? What are the total numbers? What are the top products, the top articles? Because that's useful, because I mean, it's not real time, but I can react in half an hour, an hour afterwards, and possibly try and improve things. Article's gone viral, great, let's push it out further, let's promote it more. This product's selling a lot for some reason, oh shit, we changed the price incorrectly, it's too cheap, let's fix that straight away. You're not reacting in real time, you're reacting fast, and that's useful. Daily tactical reports, things that people can action every day. I'll give you examples later on. With performance dashboards, because seriously, people actually have to understand performance in the business. Again, an example of that, and performance diagnostic, reports you look at once every sort of three months to diagnose performance, find the bugs, the errors in the website, the business, and fix them. 
examples to come still. First of all, weekly performance dashboard is a template I created years ago. They're actually um, templates anyone can reuse on my website. Um, it's actually customized with your own metrics, anything else. But you can see, it's 12 numbers only. It doesn't overload anyone. You don't need an analyst to be able to use this. A CEO possibly would make sense of this. What happened this week? Comparison period. What's the percentage change? How the big changes? Looks interesting. Drop down the top, choose your segment. Drill and level deeper. One week's not enough. What's the trend over time? Look at the chart there for any metric. So one report, not having information, provide people with the information they need to understand is there an issue here or not? Can I get off my job? Do I have to ask someone to actually investigate in more detail? It doesn't trigger business actions, it triggers further investigation, further analysis. I talked about a hierarchy of dashboards, and here's what that means. Yes, you may have a dozen dashboards, or even 30 dashboards. That's okay. They don't go out in one email to absolutely everyone. Everyone gets the two, three dashboards relevant to them. Board of directors gets the executive summary. All they care about, how much money we make last week. Level down, head of e-commerce, gets the e-commerce summary, and maybe the um, performance summary overall for the whole business, so they can see how marketing is going as well. They don't look at the merchandise report, not relevant to them, how your products are going, they're the head of e-commerce. They get the dashboard relevant to them. The social media executive, they get their report, information they need that they can act upon. That's what's relevant to them. So this sort of hierarchy here, yes, you create a lot of reports, but everyone only sees two, three reports, relevant, useful information. Diagnostic reports. This report you look at every sort of few months, not every day. And yeah, they're bigger data tables, but they're not in the Analyx tool. They're outside of that, and they're designed to be to use to answer one question, or one or two questions. This one here, the rows, different entry points of the website. The columns, different traffic sources. Intersections of the matrix there. Um, how many entries from each traffic source and um, entry point combination. What's the bounce rate or the conversion rate? Looking for things, things look a bit weird, basically. Why is it we get so much traffic through the product pages from organic search, but not paid search? Are we missing a trick there? Can we actually change our paid search strategy? Um, why is the bounce rate so high for people coming through from social media to the home page compared to direct entry? Does it make sense? Um, similar type thing, business performance diagnostic. Your business metrics, your rows, your columns, all traffic, new returning, customer versus prospect, local versus international people, by browser, by device type, by entry point, by traffic source, all different segments. It's one big, big, slight data to puke, but it's once every three months. By looking at this, create your own internal benchmarks. What should the checkout completion rate be? Well, it should be about sort of 65% looking at this. Then why is it worse in Firefox on desktop devices? What's wrong there? Why, why is it hard for people to check out the process? Identify the areas. It should actually give you, basically, this one's every three months. Look at it, analyze deeper, and set a set of business actions to take over the next three months, which you can actually monetize the cost and the value of each one there to do. Three months' time, taking the actions, re really look at it. This is all about the optimization, how to identify where your biggest problems are. Um, after tactical reports, focusing down on the business actions. Because every day, people are taking actions. They have to. If Alex exists or doesn't exist, they're still taking actions, making decisions. Let's make the decisions smarter. Give them the information they need. A message report. A message from me before. Um, it shows you top products, um, how much they're viewed, added to basket, is that success rate, how much they're sold. I mean, A product, B product, they're the money makers, the big products. You already know about them, so that's fine. But see, that one there, 6.3% at the basket rate. And usually it's about 20% based on the internal benchmarks. Something's wrong there. It could be the product image, the product copy, reviews, availability, or price. Pretty sure one of those five things. Selling with the merchandiser in their day-to-day -day job can look at and fix. And the problem they can fix, that revenue triples. They make extra one, two grand a day, or week, whatever this is. Great. 
If they make five or six decisions every day, this adds up. You're not going to change your conversion rate, but you can make a difference in business performance. A similar, D, check out completion rate, really low. It shouldn't be. Look at the internal benchmarks. E, flip that one around. 47.3% add to basket rate. It's amazing. It's in a sweet spot, not based on what I like, what products I like, based on the data we know it works. So that product there, get on the home page, get on Facebook, get in your newsletter, get it everywhere you can. If you can boost that awareness up from that 678 sessions up to 2,000 sessions, again, you're going to triple your sales based on the data. Um, and the great thing is with all that, you don't actually have to be an analyst to use it. Anyone can use it. Cut a report, same sort of logic. Top article there. It's really popular thing, viewed a lot. Great. People aren't reading it, they're not sharing it, they're not um, commenting on it. One way down here, it's being viewed a lot less. People who look at it, they read it, they share it, they comment it. It can lead to further views in the future. Put that one on Facebook newsletter anywhere you can again. Actions you can take without being an analyst is really important because we're the analysts, we're 1% of the company. Everyone else has better use the information without understanding necessarily as much detail. Get tactical with that. Um, so yeah, that's in there. The eight sort of things. And I mean, which action should you match up to which barriers? How do you do this? What should be, what should be focusing on yourself? Which are the problems you've got? Which actions should you take? Ellie, I mean, you got one to one, one million chips. This is many to many. There isn't like a one problem solution like that. You have to work on all these actions all through it to try and fix all the problems. These are things we all should be doing. Overcome all these barriers. To start improving the, um, the value that Digital Analytics drives to improve its performance. So final slides. Just some themes behind my recommendations there. The actions I suggest you all take. Analytics must impact business performance. Pretty simple really. We're not here to create reports, to look at data, anything else. We're here to impact the bottom line. If they're paying for our work, our tools, anything else there, we have to provide money back to them. If analytics is impacting business performance, you may as well get rid of it. You must strive at all times for analytics to, to drive immediate value. It's really important. Because the thing is, if you're waiting six months, I say to people, it's great, we'll do analytics properly here, I'll set it up for you, come back in six months, and I'll start showing you some data, it's kind of useless. For it to be trusted, for it to become part of the processes, for it to become important to the business, have to drive immediate value. Look for those quick wins, things you should build they didn't know beforehand. The consumers, they must be excited about the data. You can't force it onto them. They must want the information. They must see the value in it. They must see how they can make more money from using analytics. That's when it becomes, starts adding value when they actually start using it for the first time. Um, my clients did this a year and a half ago. It was my topic last year. See this, do that. So the consumers of the data, not the analysts, the people making decisions, taking actions, day in, day out. I want to get them to the stage where it's see this, do that. Like that merchandise like report, that content report, the diagnostic, the um, tactical ones. They can see a report, they can see what things going wrong, and take actions. They don't have to be an analyst, they don't have to understand the data behind it, they have to be able to take actions based on it. See this, take this action. Link to the second one there, minimise that initial setup phase. It shouldn't be six months to set up analytics. What can get done next week, in two weeks? Much as I hate the idea of GTM and page scraping, it's the place to start possibly. Start providing useful information. Start small, but build from there. But try to that initial setup phase, it shouldn't be six months, it should be a few weeks. Um, focus one business action at a time. Don't try to do everything at once, it's just not possible. Take the small steps. Focus on one area, improve that performance. Next one, next one, next one, next one. You're not going to try and change the world in one go. Take the small evolutionary steps. And if you get all those sort of parts right, take the actions, break down the barriers, try and improve these sort of areas. Then finally, the fun part of being an analyst can start to flow. You can start making recommendations to the business, start telling the CEO how to run their business, and you start getting paid a lot more yourselves.
Thank you.